How... How was I supposed to know? <coughs> Asking... <coughs> Michelle! Asking? Pshaw! It's almost like you're, uh, you're a capable human being who can communicate, Kanetsu. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a problem? No, no problem. I'm afraid she's like fading away or something. <laughs> You're blushing, aren't you? Your cheeks are as red as tomatoes. Ah, uh, I wish I could see you now. I'm going to open the window. Why? It's night. It's going to be cold. Exactly. I need to cool down. <laughs> I wonder if she thinks or maybe she knows. Like if they ha make Morgana have a change of heart, she'll disappear. Oh, that's true too. Because um, only Michelle has like his physical body. So maybe, like, Morgana will disappear, and then she'll fade away, and he'll live a life of, like, normalcy or something. I don't know. Hmm. Because how is Michelle supposed to get back? I, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Ah. Uh. What are you eyeing at? It's a spring snow. <gasps> His face, you're so cute, Michelle. <laughs> Aww. It's gorgeous. There was hardly a cloud when I was outside earlier, and now it's snowing. <laughs> Are you worried Maria might catch something out in this weather? Hopefully she's in bed by now. Oh, look at him smile! <laughs> I've never seen it snow in the spring before. Maybe I just wasn't paying any attention to what lay beyond the dark walls of that house. Maybe. Have you? Have I... Seen a springtime snow before? Three or four times, perhaps. So, so not very often, no. Ah, so you've seen this already. Who would it have been better if I hadn't? No, that's not what I'm saying. I just thought it would be nice if it was the first time for both of us. <laughs> you sound like a little kid. Is it that childish? Well, I don't mind either way. I'm so glad my first time seeing it isn't alone. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Little specks of white drifting through the darkness. Yes, I can see it. It's beautiful. I'm happy I could see this with you, too. Aww. Intense weeping. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the wind to cool you off too much now. I think it's time for you to warm back up. Sorry, I was so engrossed by the sight. <laughs> Maybe it'll stick and you can see it again tomorrow. The grounds would be quite lovely covered in snow. But for now, you should get some sleep. I suppose. You already passed out once today. You need to make sure you're well rested. Hard to argue with that. I'll be counting on your help again tomorrow. Our success or failure depends on how tomorrow goes. That it does. Let's make it count. Good night, Giselle. Good night, Michelle. She's being really weird. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, just uh, wh what do you know? Oh no. <laughs> tick tock. Tick. Tock. One day. Now we still need two keys. Uh... Is this a cellar? It looks like it, yeah. 
My head feels like someone drove a spike through it. What's going on? Am I in the cellar? Oh boy. Ooh. Oh! Oh no. I... Is this Yukimasa? Yeah, I mean, he's been associated with the cellar, and now we're hearing, like, leather sounds. Ugh. My hands are tied up behind my back. <clears throat> what am I doing down here? <clears throat> Wait. Giselle. Giselle. Say something, Giselle. Unable to make any sort of sense out of my circumstances. It's not long after I regain consciousness that panic begins to sink in. And the most unsettling thing of all, the most frightening detail, is the fact that I can't hear her voice. Awake, are we? Are you the one who brought me here? What? You don't remember this morning. Morning. Right, I woke up because I heard someone enter the room, and then he hit me over the head. You're not dead at least. That's good. What do you hope to accomplish by tying me up and bringing me down here? Remember what I said last night at supper about me, pu about me putting on a little sideshow for you. I didn't think you were actually telling the truth. What? I was reenacting the Last Supper, with you as the guest of honor. Oh, now I see. When you were asking if I had any family or friends, you were trying to find out if anyone would notice if I disappeared, if anyone would make any noise. Yeah. You're sharper than you look. If only you caught on yesterday. <clears throat> Please, Giselle, say something. Giselle, why won't you answer me? Why can't I hear your voice? Why can't I feel you there? You're a quiet one. I thought you'd be a little louder. <clears throat> what made you decide to get rid of me? Did the nun say something? She has nothing to do with this. I have permission from the Lord to act at my own discretion. Should I come across anyone acting suspicious? This doesn't seem in the least be in the least bit wrong to you. I wouldn't say that. You're an acquaintance friend who made a long trip to come see him, and I have you tied up in the cellar. That's not what I would consider right. No. But seeing as you're a good enough friend for him to let you stay here, I assume he also spilled everything. He never had what it took, that boy. If I were to guess, it got to be too much for him to handle, so he went to a friend. To you. More like the other way around? <laughs> Leave him out of this. I see. So how much did he tell you? If you come clean, I might even let you go. Get rid of him. Have you take his place. I said leave him out of this! So you're determined not to talk, are you? What's a loyal friend? Listen to me! Listen? Oh, I'm listening. Oh god, his face. Yeah, I was about oh. to say that. Oh, I'm listening. Because you have a lot of talking to do. <clears throat> I don't have many chances to let loose. So I'll be taking as much time as I can get today. He says in an eerily flat tone of voice as he draws near, pausing between each step as if to taunt me. And when he reaches me, struggling to get off the ground, he slams his heel into my shoulder. Not being able to use your hands makes you appreciate how much easier it is to stand up when you can, doesn't it? 
Help. Someone, please, help! Ah! <laughs> Don't waste your energy. No one ever comes back this far. And the door is so heavy, your screams would never make it out. <sighs> but that's the le least of your worries. The door to the cellar has been locked. And the only key is right here. There's no getting in. If you can run fast enough, you might have a chance of making it to the door and escaping. Wanna test your luck? I doubt you can make it. <sighs> he puts the full weight of his body into his heel, pressing down on my spine, turning my breath into gasping sputters. I gather together all my strength, but even that isn't enough to overpower him. <laughs> now you're going to tell me everything. What are you and the boy scheming? What's your end game? Who else is in on it? <sighs> Damn it! I don't have many options here. What can I even do in this situation? Tell me what I want to know. And maybe I'll let you live. I guess I have no choice but to tell him the truth. Alright, fine. I'll tell you everything. Just know that this isn't some this isn't some attempt to beg for mercy. I came to this mansion in order to unlock the door to the observation tower and free Morgana. Mel was not the one who told me about her though. I went to him and asked for his assistance. He didn't have to tell me because I already knew. Both about her, what you're doing to her, stealing her blood and making medicine from it. Who told you then? Morgana did. Morgana's soul told me everything. I am not from this time. I lived in a time after her death. Oof. Ooh. <laughs> to process what just happened. What? Oh, it took me several moments to process what just happened. Oh no, you broke it! A fire runs up my arm from my little finger, only turning into pain when it finally reaches my brain. I twist my head back to see the man on top of me holding my right hand. My finger snapped backwards at the second joint. <laughs> 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 I'll ask you again. Who told you? <laughs> Morgana did! She, she dies on the day of the Harvest Festival! Next up is your ring finger. And then your middle if you insist on keeping this up. I'm telling you the truth. She bears so much hatred, she casts a curse on your souls. I've seen what happens in your next life. Now you're resorting to souls and next lives. I'm genuinely impressed. What lies are you going to cook up next, white-haired knave? If I don't set Morgana free, your souls will be enslaved for all eternity. Imprisoned in this cursed mansion. When the bell tolls noon on the day of the Harvest Festival, you'll lose everything. All of you will. You cannot escape it unless you do something. And the nun, the reason you locked Morgana up in the first place, she won't be safe either. She'll be killed. Ooh, that's probably not the thing you should have said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two fingers left. Can you keep up the axe for that long? <sighs> Ah, everything I'm saying is the truth! I've seen it all with my own two eyes! Why are you so insistent on maintaining this farce? Is it to protect the boy, or do you have some other motive? Every last word is true! 
continuing to lie isn't going to make this any easier. Your voice is shaking. The pain's starting to get to you, isn't it? What you're doing to Morgana, it achieves nothing. You must release her and atone for your sins. Otherwise your soul, and the souls of those you care about, will be doomed to suffering. I see what it is now. You don't have the information I want, so all you can do is spin these lies. <laughs> you thick cold bastard. There are other options, though. Beg me for mercy. Sob like a little child, sniveling your, please don't kill me, and I don't want to die and it hurts so bad, please stops. Grovel on the ground, you tiny pathetic man, and if you can entertain me, maybe I'll consider it. I will never shed another tear, and I will never beg for your damn mercy. Nothing I've said to you has been a lie. Some cheap attempt to fool you into letting me go. Every word of it is true. I know the sins you've burdened your soul with. I know the fate that awaits you in your next life, and I will gladly tell you every detail. You're down to just your thumb. Now go on, if you're so eager to tell me. Let's hear about my supposed next life, shall we? <sighs> in your next life, you lose your memory in an accident, causing you to forget your own humanity. In its savagery, you normally kept, you normally keep hidden beneath a mask is released, unrestricted, and you turn into a creature no more than, no, you turn into a beast. <laughs> My mask. You murder countless people, including the woman you once called your lover. Lover? Hers is a name you know very well. Pauline. Your tether. Oh. oh. My tether. How do you know that word? Because I know everything. I know what you wanted. I know you were never able to attain. I know what you were never, n never able to obtain. You idolized humanity, and you yearned for peace. You're telling me, I kill the nun in my next life. I am. That is the fate that lies waiting for you. Her love for you is so strong. She refuses to believe you're dead. She leaves her seaside hometown in search of you, and she finds you. But you, you slaughter her. Did you say she lived in a city on the sea? In addition to her, you also lose someone else. A woman who tried to give you the peace you so desire. Which eventually causes you to succumb entirely to instinct. Enough! <laughs> All right, fine. Now I know what you are. You are no mere seasoned liar. You're some kind of evil spirit that deceives humans. You're peering into my heart, tailoring your lies specifically to manipulate me. I am not. I swear I have seen everything that happens. Enough. <sighs> But there's a chance you can change your fate. All you have to do is seize your involvement in Morgana's imprisonment. Set her free. What is that word? A Allay? Allay? Yes. Allay the hatred she bears for you. Are you deaf? I said I've heard enough. Release Morgana. Save your soul. Give her a better future. Silence! <laughs> oh. uh, uh, uh. I think... I think I'll take your arm off first. Cut right through your shoulder, nice and slowly. Don't! <laughs> <laughs> C 
It'll still be attacked for a while yet. Don't you worry. You hear that spirit? That's the sound of your flesh ripping apart. The sound of your muscle being severed. <laughs> Not gonna be doing much talking anymore, are you? Not through the pain you aren't. <laughs> Plead for your life, spirit! Beg for mercy! Admit it was all a sham! Apologize! Let the room fill with your cries of agony! Nothing was a sham! Every last word, it's all the truth! I'll rip that head right off your shoulders! I don't care who or what you are anymore! You're dead! Is that Pauline? Probably. You will do no such thing! Ah, <gasps> uh, yep. Get back. You will not harm him for- Pauline. What? What are you doing here, Pauline? I told you to stay away! And the door- The door was locked! I opened it. You! One of Nellie's hairpins was long enough to get into the lock and undo it. She won't be getting much use out of it anymore, though. Busted it up pretty badly in the process. The locks on the tower door are too complex, but the one here is a lot simpler. But you never expected me to go catapult burglar on you, huh? You stupid boy! Oh, what was your question last night again? Something about being on the edge of a cliff or whatever. Well, here's your answer. I'll do everything I can to save the both of them. This is terrible. How could you? Oh my, you're badly hurt. Sit tight, I'll call for a doctor. Don't worry about me. You need to talk to him. To get him to talk. We've got to do something about you, though. I'll get that wound patched up at least, until you can get it properly checked out. Thank you. Was it you who went to get Pauline? No, I ran into her while I was looking for you, which is when she told me she was looking for him. Neither of us were having any luck, so we scoured the mansion together. And when we reached the stairs to the cellar and heard the screaming, my worst fears were confirmed. So I picked the lock, and here we are. Sorry we didn't make it sooner. This could have been avoided. God, look at what he did to you! There's so much blood! And your fingers. No, you made it just in time. My arm's still attached, and I'm not dead. Neither of which would be true without you. So I guess that means I actually did something good for once. Did something for someone else rather than myself. Aww. That you did. So everything Michelle said... is true? The Lord isn't storing his valuables in the tower. He's got a girl locked up there. Well, is it true or not? It's still the Lord's property either way. The church is being funded with her miracle blood. So that makes her valuable, yes. So you're saying I've been handing out human blood and telling people it was medicine? Not human. Witch. No, Morgana is a human girl. She hasn't become a witch yet, at least not here. 
All this time, I've been lying to the people who believe in me, without even knowing what I was doing. Like you said, you didn't know. You haven't done anything wrong. Are we just gonna ignore that he was trying to kill Michelle? <laughs> Ignorance does not excuse sin. All that time I spent with you, and I didn't notice anything wrong. That was the idea. You weren't supposed to notice anything. It's not your fault I deceived you. It's unreasonable to think you should have been able to. All that. You did it to help me, though, didn't you? Like a stupid little girl, I assumed it was all out of the good of your heart. Never once stopping to think even deep, any deeper than that. About where it was all coming from. Maria was right. I was blind. I was content to be pleased about the people I thought I was helping. I want you to do something for me. I want you to set this girl, set Morgana free. Please, do not make your sins any greater than they already are. But without the witch's blood, we'd lose the Lord's patronage, and then the church. What good is a church that isn't actually saving anyone? Actually, no. That's avoiding the point entirely. What do you mean? To, to tell you the truth, I... I never really cared about the church at all. You... what? How can you say that, when you've always been so unconditionally charitable, even if it meant giving away food or money you needed yourself? People call you the saintess because that's what you are. A saint. It's true, I do do that. But the fact is, I'm no saint. I don't deserve to be held up as one, nor do I belong in that position. I'm just an ordinary girl. I never wanted to be a nun, you know. I just didn't have any other options available to me. And I sure didn't have the confidence to make it out there on my own like Maria. So I did as I was told. And to keep myself from thinking it was a mistake, from feeling dissatisfied with that choice. I put everything I had into my responsibilities to the church. My unconditional charity was rooted entirely in selfishness. And the longer I kept it up, the harder it became to stop. I forgot what I really wanted. And what would that be? A normal, happy life as an ordinary girl. In a city on the water. What? That's what you said your dream was, for your next life. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, a quiet life with the man I love. You might... You might get that wish, in fact. Huh? You. That's what you... That's what you said, wasn't it? That in her next life she lives in a city by the sea. That is correct. In your next life, Pauline, you are not a nun. You're an ordinary girl who lives in a seaside city. A sweet, cheerful, energetic girl who wears her heart on her sleeve. You have both your mother and father. And I... So you believe me now? I don't know. Your claims are utterly ridiculous. But it's getting harder to think you're lying. If that's what you really wanted, Pauline, what should I have done instead? I envied what you had. That solace. The last thing I wanted was for you to lose it. But you're saying you found no peace in that life. That's right. So what should I have done? 
I wanted you to take me away from this place, somewhere far away. I wanted you to make it so I could be Pauline, not Marie. That would have been my ideal life. To live with you. To have a family with you. How... How was I supposed to know? <coughs> Asking... <coughs> Michelle! Asking... Pshaw! It's almost like you're, uh, you're a capable human being who can communicate, Kanetsu. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't possibly have known. I realize that. And that makes me every bit as complicit as you. Set Mark on a free. I will be expected to pay for my crimes. That itself is not a problem. I have every intention of facing the consequences. But we have done terrible, gruesome things. I don't know what the usual punishment for such is in this land. But if I had to guess, I would say execution. And me being an outsider makes it easier for people to place the blame on me. I won't be able to take you away. <laughs> we'll find each other again in our next lives. Okay? Okay. As I'm sure you heard, my involvement in this conspiracy ends here. Oh, it's the pretty music! I'm glad to hear you've decided to take action, after almost ripping my arm off and breaking my fingers. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, you said it right there! <laughs> I'm still alive, that's what matters. The third key is in the Lord's possession. You said you needed it by noon of the Harvest Festival, yes? Which means we need to act quickly. That's correct. We must set Morgana free before the bell tolls noon tomorrow. Then tonight. That's the next time the Lord will be here. Tonight I'll kill him and take his key. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're useful. Wait, no, we're not shedding any blood to get his key. Do you remember what I said a few minutes ago about not committing any further sins? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> he is not likely to hand over the key without a fight, though. We need to convince him, not force his hand. Besides, simply opening the door is not enough. Why not? My goal here is to save Morgana's soul. In order to do that, I need to pacify at least some degree of the hatred she bears in me. The hatred rooted in her perception of you and the things you've done to her. I need to change that perception. I'm not quite following. What do you mean by change her perception? For you and the Lord to tell your stories, to describe what happened from your perspectives. You want my perspective? I do. Something in your motivations or your circumstances might serve to lessen the animosity she holds for you. The greater the discrepancy in what she believes to be the truth and the full story, with everyone's perspectives included, the greater the chance she may have a change of heart. Okay, I now understand what you want from me. However, my perspective will do nothing to serve that end. There is no ambiguity, no justification for my action. Regardless, I would still like to know the whole truth, if you're willing to tell me you're part of it. Okay. I'll come by your room later today. Uh, hey, is it alright if I'm there too? Sorry. I would rather if you weren't. Why? Everything you need to know, I've told you already. I've captured a witch. 
No. I kidnapped a young girl for profit and imprisoned her in the tower. My motivation, as I said, was to keep your church funded. Those are the facts. The things I did along the way were brutal and inhumane. I hope you can understand. Why I wouldn't want the woman I love to hear any of that. I understand. I'll see you again later in the day. I'll be waiting. I should get going too. You're going to need medication and something to get that arm dressed properly. And if there's anything else I can get you, let me know. If you want to see a doctor, I'll find you the best one I can. I'm so sorry for ever doubting you. No, I understand. I'm glad you came at all. Me too. Well, see you. I'm kind of surprised. He's actually got a soft spot, huh? Now... I don't... I think at this point this is nothing that's ever going to be sort of clarified and it's probably just something we need to just decide for ourselves. But I wonder if Yukimasa is actually in love with Pauline or if he's in love with the her being a tether or if she's a tether because he is in love with her. Hmm, maybe the last one. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I, I was talking I don't I was talking with Moon about how I think he's probably the most com one of the most complicated characters in this. Yeah. I'm kind of- oh yeah. And I was sure you were full of it when you said the two of them had a thing going on. What does she see in a guy like him anyway? She's got bad taste in guys, that's for sure. <laughs> What's with that look? Just admiring your rather inappropriate remarks. Uh, um, I don't know if you're that much better, Michelle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry. I was just so relieved that it kind of came out. It's okay. You almost got a smile out of me. Why does he hate Mel so much? <laughs> uh, I don't know. If <laughs> if I had to guess, it would probably go back to that whole thing where he was the rose bush. Uh, not even. I mean, I'm sure that didn't leave the best impression on him it, it did see he did seem to be hard on him even before maybe it was that but i also think it's kind of like how after we heard mel's story he was going on about how he should have done more and mel kept going on about how oh he would have killed nelly or oh he would have killed me and michelle was willing to make this the whole you know sacrificing himself for giselle I think that's his reason, but if that is his reason, that's still a really bad <laughs> motivation. Yeah. I've never seen you smile before. I blame being relieved, too. Now, would you mind helping me get back to my room? Sure, no problem. My shoulders are yours. You know... You really are something else, Michelle. I could hear you through the door as I was getting it open, and honestly, I'm amazed you were able to stand up to him like that. I don't want to get my hopes up too high just yet, but I'm starting to think you might actually be able to do something about the Lord. That's reassuring. Thank you. Sure. Anyway, let's get going. You should get as much rest as you can until he shows up. Well, I mean, you should be going to see a doctor with these wounds. Oh yeah, Nelly's been worried sick about you all day. I'll have to tell her not to pounce on you because I'm sure she'll come running as soon as she hears we found you. He's so not used to being cared for. Yeah. Giselle, you were right. 
I do have people here who will support me. People who are grateful for me and who show concern for me. But you have to know, Giselle, that it's your voice I want to hear more than anyone else's. Why can I not hear you? Or are you, Giselle? Giselle. I wonder, as I th maybe the more they change the future, the more she disappears or like is weakening. It could be that, though. I'm still, I'm still not sure if changing the future is exactly what's happening here. I think, I, I don't know. I don't even want to say anymore. Cause, <laughs> uh. It's almost sunset. Looks like the snow didn't stick. You couldn't actually see the snow last night, could you, Giselle? Was that when the light started fading from the sphere of darkness encasing you? Or had it been going on even longer than that? Why didn't you say anything? Not a word. I don't believe you're gone for good. You're still out there somewhere. I know it. And I will come for you. I swear it. Just a moment. Here I am, as promised. I heard you talking, so I thought there was someone with you. But you're alone. It's only me, yes. I see. Weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> as I told you earlier, my perspective on events will do nothing to change Morgana's mind. I would still like to hear what you have to say. Hmm. All right. Not being from this land, I don't believe in the local god. Nor do I think priests and preachers any better than con artists. Where did that come from? I don't know, I just felt like saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you make him so, like, airheaded. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is if I give a confessional, it won't be to another human. Hmm? You're an angel. I'm not into guys, Yukimasa. <laughs> Come again? That's not what the girls told me. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> the angel from the stained glass window. That's you, isn't it? Wait, wait, how on earth did you come to that conclusion? I was thinking about everything you said earlier in the cellar. The fact that you knew about Morgana. The fact that you can see into my heart. And in particular, all your talk about saving people's souls. Salvation is not man's job. Which means you must be something else. I'm... I will tell you everything. Every foolish mistake. Every terrible crime. And in exchange, I would like you to tell me what I am to do next. To lead me down the path I am to take. I... I terrify myself. With every passing day, my ability to tell what direction I'm supposed to be heading in dulls. So after I tell my story, I want you to do that for me. Please, will you show me the way? I... I can no more decide the path you take than you. But you saw into my heart. Just so. If you were here, you would encourage me to agree to his request, wouldn't you? Okay. I can't guarantee that anything I'll have to say will be of use, but I will do the best I can to lead you in the right direction. Thank you. Now, before I begin, there's one thing I need to clarify. Hmm? I am not in love with Pauline. Oh, well that answers your question. Yeah, okay, I'm surprised that they are actually answering this. She does play an important role in my life, though that much is true. She's your tether. 
Exactly. I also... I suppose you could say... Admire her. She is everything I am not. Everything I cannot be. Is this something I should tell her, you think? That I don't love her. That I'm incapable of feeling love. Should I tell her that, knowing she genuinely loves me for some reason? My instinct tells me I shouldn't. I know very well I'm lying to her. But there are circumstances in which a lie is preferable to the truth, are there not? With that said, I'm ready to begin. You have my full attention. And I think this is a good spot to end right now. A couple minutes earlier, but it'll be good to start things off the next episodes here. Yeah. But thank you to everyone who came. Whew. All right, so two keys, one left to go. And next time we will begin with Yukimatsu's story. And then move to Maria's story. Yeah. Have a good night or day. See ya. Our family name once so well regarded <laughs> oh. is now barely whispered aloud. Kanetsu brought oh, more out of a night of debauchery you. than memories only. No disease, you, syphilis. You, you hug the wrong body pillow. The wrongest body pillow. She right. hugged the Sasuke body pillow. Oh. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> that's... that's rough. Uh, only meditate. Okay. It is, because it's the cheapest one that you can get off the bat. Don't think... It is only one will be never drink. <laughs> uh, let's have Shades Gamble. <laughs>